I do trust Hayden's work and Graham's, but uh, I won't be test flying my plane. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay someone for that. We'll actually have to get those parachutes out for that one. Righto, so I'm back down here with Hayden that I went for a flying his extra with. <laughs> but today, uh, I've got my IO540 engine here for my Glass Air 3 that I'm building up. So I'm pumped about this, but uh, we're stripping it down today and getting ready to order all the parts. I know absolutely nothing about engines. A lot of people think I do, but I don't. So Hayden's gonna uh, be showing me how to strip this down and what it is. Yeah, I, I hope I don't strip any bolts or stuff it up. What do you reckon, Hayden? We're gonna get into it and pull it down? Yeah, we might as well, hey, what else do you do today? <laughs> That's, right. That's right. The weather's too crap for flying, so we might as well pull the engine apart. Perfect. Where do you want me to start? We'll set you up and let's get the baffles and all this stuff off it. Okay. Then the exhaust. And I'll poke around with some of the plumbing. Rightio, let's get into it. I'm just literally pulling out all these bolts here, through there. You happy with that? Yeah, and just follow it around, you'll see little things that connect it everywhere. Yep. Like with that, that fuel line's gonna end up stopping it. Yep. So we need to deal with that. Anyway. Maybe we should have spoken about this before how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, I'll, I'll start. Grind it there, we'll start. Yeah, let's start grinding it out. It already looks hard. Right, oh, no. right. Oh. Not the right one. <laughs> My first job and I dropped it. I've got the baffles off, so that was my first job. They're, um, completely off. they're off. What do you want me to do now? You want me to do this exhaust? You might as well do that exhaust, mate. Rightio, perfect. Some of them have to be done with the spanner, but not all of them. Do as many as you can with the got a first go. half inch on the, three, on the quarter inch five here. Yep, I don't think I can get this one with it, but. Do as many as you can with this one. Let's see how fast I am with my hands. That one there, mate. See, it's been, not that it matters now, we're pulling apart anyway, but see, that looks like it's been leaking. I nearly bet it has been. See, it's yeah, okay. black there. So what happens that when that happens? really been sealing. So because it's an intake tube, that sucks air, and it's already got a metered amount of fuel in there from the fuel servo unit and through the spider here. Yep. It, it already assumes there's no leaks. So it's got the correct amount of fuel. So this cylinder could be lean, which you'll notice by the EGT on this cylinder. Okay. You wonder why, what, what's wrong? The injectors are dirty or whatever. But that's sucking in air there. Right. Yeah, so that's something we're really, really fussy on. So once the engine's together, we've got a little test we do to make sure they're definitely sealed. Yep. And when you first built the engine, that O-ring can be a little bit rolled off there and leak there, or that can leak there. It only just seals by so a couple of mil. Do you buy new ones of those or just paint them and clean them all up or what do you do Normally, there? Normally if we're building that back as a TOI again, that'd be we'd reuse those okay. and clean them up. Yep. But because we're going a, a completely different sump, we'll go a billet sump with a cold air intake on yours these tubes won't fit anyway. Okay. So this is the fuel control unit. We've just had to do one on our other Glass Air 3 because it wasn't running right. So uh, this is probably very similar, but uh, yeah, because it's not a twin turbo I'm using anymore, I guess it's not being used for this motor. Currently pulling off the uh, alternator and then I'll pull off the starter motor next to it. Uh, so those are the jobs Hayden's given me for now, but yeah. What do you reckon that way? 10 kilos? <laughs> well, probably not 10, but it'd be probably seven. Far out. You got scales around here? Yeah. You do? I do. All right, well, let's all, right, eh? you want to let's all put bets on. Here you go, Riley, come and lift this up. You put a bet on, what do you reckon it weighs? I'm going 8.5. No, I don't reckon it's that heavy. You don't reckon? I reckon 6.5. 6.5? Oh, maybe I'm wrong here, but I'm going 8.5. Eight, yeah. Eight, right, eh? So we've got 6.5, eight. And furthest one away pays for lunch. <laughs> 7.4 kilos, so you were closest. Was I closest? No, actually, closest. you were closest. Oh, no. Riley's closest. Right, oh, no, let's see this. We didn't guess the weight of this one. No, okay, What's, what do you reckon the weight of this is? I'm going 3.1. I'm yeah, four. So I'll go 3.3. 3. 
Oh, Righto. Got got so it's oh. half the weight? So pretty much, yeah. So that's yeah. four kilos less we're saving just in the starter motor. So uh, that's a big saving. So we've also got the alternator lightweight we're gonna put on in that. So pretty cool to at least see that. We've just uh, pulled the fuel spider off. You can see why, uh, why it's called that, but what to do, Hayden? That's the main fuel. And that, that goes straight to the, when you hear about people talking about gaming injectors or whatever, that's what yep. the injectors are. That just feeds the injectors, and that's a fuel dis distribution block. Right. So that's pretty well it does, distributes the, the, the fuel straight to all the cylinders. And then the gaming injectors, they're just done because it, produ it more evenly spreads it, doesn't pretty it? That's well. why they did it? Th th there's nothing real special about looking at it or seeing the difference. It's just that they're a match flow set of injectors. Yep. So your EGTs and cylinder head temps should be... Everything stays pretty good. The same, yeah. That's what that one does. And we'll replace, obviously, with your engine. Yep. That configuration will stay exactly the same, except we'll definitely put new lines on. Yep, yep. Just so we know we're not, we haven't got a chance of cracking the line. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she looks a bit corroded. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. There's one cylinder off, the first cylinder off. Right. It still has, it's complete. The rocket cover's still on, rocket shafts are still in, which we'll worry about pulling that apart later. So let's just sit in this tray over here. Yep. Can't wait to get inside. But at least the first one anyway. So we can now pull the tubes and push rods out. Do they have to go with each its one or they? They normally do if we're reusing that can, but we're replacing all that stuff. Yep, yep. Let's get a rag and give that a quick wipe out inside. It actually don't look too bad, huh? Yeah. What do you reckon? It's done a lot of work, no, it? it's the main thing, be, rather than just being plainly worn out, is the corrosion. There's a tiny bit in there. Yep. Which nearly every engine has. It's got fine wire plugs, top end, bottom. And the good indication, as soon as you see that, the good indication when you see fine wires, top end, bottom. It tells me that the guy who owned the engine said, oh, I don't care what it costs, just put the gear stuff in. Yep. A lot of guys will only put the fine wires in the bottom to save money. Keep your hand there, so, so you've got to keep the push rods in the tubes. Keep the Keep the tube this way and just keep wiggling. Get it past the piston. That's good. Done. Got it. I'll just get them off here for you. Cool. Lay them on the on the bed. <laughs> right oh. Two down. Yeah, two cylinders off now. Uh, we haven't pulled the pi pistons off yet. The pin buttons are actually seizing the piston because the yep. motor's fairly corroded. So we're gonna have to knock them out. So put a little spacer in here. Yep. Then we'll just we need to tap them out. Normally you don't have to. If you put an engine apart just because it's worn out and they come out of a plane, say last week, that comes out with your thumb. In actual fact, it would have fallen out by now. Right. If it's sitting like that. Yep. They just fall out. Yeah. So as soon as the cylinder comes off, you've got to grab your hand there to grab the button so it doesn't fall out. And these not falling out. They need yep. to be snapped out. So we'll pull off the, the third no, cylinder we'll, on this side and then we'll do no, them. We'll just keep on one side. Yep. Yeah. yep. Perfect. So this one's right ready on. to come out, yep. two nuts off. That's good to go. And we'll have our first, I'll spin that around a sec. So that can go on the top shelf and straight away we want to look at those bearings. That looks, it's done some work, but still okay. Yep. Oh, good, you want to chuck that. Oh, I'll put the cap on first. Yep. Just hold that, hold that with there. there. I'll spin this around. See that rocker, you're starting to come up, right? If you hold your hand on that, or if you can see it on the film, that rocker's starting to come up because the camshaft is starting to get on the nose of the can, the camshaft's here, pushes the lifter, the lifter pushes the push rod, and that's pushing the rocker up, which rocks there and pushes the valve spring down. So we want to have the pressure off that if you're pulling them apart. Yep. That's one way you can pull them apart, but obviously we're leaving them all together. So if we come back this way, you see the rocker moving, that's because the camshaft is coming back towards the base circle. Then that's that's the base circle there. Well, yeah. no. 
So, so we'll actually put that back on and pull it off the same way we were? Yeah, you might yep. as well just pull it off the same way yep. it's been going. Perfect. So we're uh, finally pulling the last cylinder off, which is good. There we go. If you pull those, uh, all those washers those off. Those the washers, and there's a container there for those. Mm. Righto, last one's off. No one up here. All those push ones back for you. So if you want to start, either undoing those or get those off. Yep, not a drama. Yep. And obviously the, the vertical ones, the intake part can stay on. Yep. Onto the sump. So that just all comes off as all one. All these bolts stay. Yeah. Yep. There's no reason to take it off at this stage. So I'll just so leave a top, a bottom and a top one to hold it. And I'll pull all the other ones and off. all these through here, Will. See, so all the way underneath. Yep. The whole row, they're all the same size. Everything's 716. Righto, sounds good. Righto, so we're probably two thirds of the way through stripping the motor down now. We've got uh, all the cylinders off. The uh, pistons were being a bit of buggers and uh, won't come out. So we're actually pulling all them off. the pins are seized into the, because this has so much corrosion in it, the pins are seized inside the pistons. So the rods need to come off the crankshaft anyhow. So we'll pull the rod straight off the crank and the pistons, the pins will get pushed out in the press. That corrosion is just Perfect, and then uh, just sitting, yeah. from there, I'm going to start pulling the sump off, um, and then we'll do the last thing and crack the, uh, what, the crank case? Is that, is that right? We'll split the case, yeah. <laughs> Righto. Of the gears once this comes off, actually. Yep. And we've left the pelly bogged up, we left the pumps and stuff on there. We won't right. put it back together like this. Yep. We'll, have, we'll put it back together separate, but just to bulk it up, get it apart quicker. Yeah, okay. Now, so as the engine turns, that's what happens. So there's the camshaft. That's actually, that gear is actually part of the camshaft. Right. That's molded as part of the camshaft. That's all right. So as uh, this is the crankshaft. That, that turns the magnetos here. to his hand. Yeah, that's the idle that turns the magnetos and also the cam. Yep. And the cam spins at half the speed of the crank. And as that, and so the mag is actually. So as that crank turns, that gear's part of the crankshaft. It's part of the camshaft. So that's what's happening there. Right. Uh, pretty close now. We're about to uh, crack the crankcase. Um, and that'll pretty much have it done, won't it? There's nothing else to do. The crankshaft will be sitting on the end stand. The crankshaft yep. will be still bolted to the end stand, and the whole case will be apart. Yeah. We're a little bit uh, pushed for time because Dad and I flew down the little glass there, so we're going to fly back home. Got to leave by four o'clock, but uh, yeah, we'll get this all done. It's about two thirty now, and uh, yeah, get going then. and get this last one out. Yeah. The last one's always the hardest. The, um, and you can't use magnets. I wish you could because they make it so easy. You cannot use magnets on them. Right. And what to do if you do? It sticks them to the bottom of the lifter. Yep. And buggers up all the oil clearance in the bottom of the lifter. Oh, right. Yeah, so I would have just used a magnet. <laughs> well, most, any mechanic with half a brain would use a magnet because that's the easiest way to get them out. Yep. As soon as you do use a magnet, they've got to put them in the bin. The Bugger. whole lifter goes Yeah, in. okay, yep. yep. So uh, we've pulled everything apart and all the parts has gone on this rack to make sure that everything for this engine stays here. We'll actually pretty much cling wrap the whole thing up to quarantine it away from any other engines that Hayden and his son might be doing. This is all the parts. The only thing left to do is put the crankcase up there, split that in half and put it up there. But it'll allow for everything to, uh, to not get uh, lost or, uh, or mixed up with any other engine. And um, yeah, and then Hayden will put together a bit of an order of all the new parts we're gonna order to completely overhaul the motor. But it's been pretty interesting doing all this. Never pulled apart a motor before, so this has been cool. Yep. Yeah, you just hold your camshaft in. Yep. Pretty well. You're you want to come around. Face towards. Just, just, just don't. Yeah, stand there. Is that corrosion on that, or is that how they are? 
No, that's how they are. That's how they are? Well, I'm going to lift the cam out now. So that's quite go. good? That's real good. Yeah, right. Roller cams are always good. Yep. And those lifters, when, when the case comes out, we're going to keep the lifters in the case. The case is going to be upside down that way. Right, well, no, that seals out. So it's going to come off real easy. Oh, yeah. Right. Upside down. Oh. There's nothing else you can possibly pull off the engine. All in a day's work. As much as we can strip down on the engine, it's uh, it's done after a whole pretty day, good. but pretty cool, eh? Yeah, that's good effort, actually. It's, and, and you didn't, honestly, I've been watching all day and uh, you haven't stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've been uh, trying to get it done, but uh, yeah, no, it's been really interesting trying to look at it. So I can't thank you enough. I can't thank Hayden enough uh, from HP Engines. Uh, it's been, been great, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a pretty relaxing day. It's been a fun day. It's the most fun engine we've ever actually pulled. <laughs> That's so. good. And I guess from here, it'll be about me and Hayden having a few chats on the phone, working out what we want to do to get the most power and, uh, well, not the most power, to keep it reliable with yeah. power and see, uh, I guess, there's, you know, how much it's going to cost as well because the building these engines can be expensive. But uh, we'll come up with something and we'll show you with the, uh, the build and what we've ordered. Yeah, and we'll start measuring up and track testing and get a parts order and start throwing it all back together. Perfect. Yep. We've just finished here for the day with the uh, stripping down of the motor and I'm about to uh, jump in the little glass air too with that and head back to Toowoomba, which is only about a uh, 30 minute flight. So thanks to Hayden from HP Engines. Um, it's been great to come down here and uh, learn a lot about the motor and excited to see what he does with it. So if you enjoyed the video and you want to keep up with more on the uh, glass air three build, make sure you like and subscribe and uh, you know put any comments on uh, what you want to see in the future.